So if you're on this call, chances are it's because you've got clients that are not getting the financing they need through traditional sources. Um, just to give you an idea as to who is on the call with you, on this call right now are bankers, equipment financing sources, we have CPAs, business brokers, attorneys, turnaround coaches, business coaches, a wide variety of people, all of whom have something in common, that they're working with businesses in what is a very tight credit environment. I'm Chris Lanus. I'm a business development officer at Versant Funding, and what I hope to do today is to help to inform you about another type of financing that's available that many in the market aren't terribly familiar with, and that financing is account receivable factoring. Factoring can be a valuable source of financing, particularly in a very tight credit market. I'm going to give you some insight into our brand of factoring. It's called non-recourse full notification factoring. And it's a kind of factoring that can help businesses that on paper don't look very strong, uh, businesses that are struggling, businesses that are very new, uh, or businesses that are just not bankable in any way. We're often able to help them provide a bridge to a point where they are financeable by more traditional sources. I have a few objectives for this webinar. I'm not trying to make everybody an expert in factoring, I'm trying to help you know when a client of yours could benefit from our financing. So starting with helping you get an understanding of the factoring terminology so that you can speak to your clients in an educated way about factoring. I'm going to provide a step-by-step -step explanation of the process of factoring adverse and funding. And I'm going to provide you some insight into competitive landscape. There are a lot of factoring companies out there. I want to try to give you an idea as to when you might choose Versant over some others. I'm going to allow some time for, uh, well, I'm going to go through first some frequently asked questions, and I'm going to leave lots of time at the end for your questions. And the best way for you to submit them is through GoToWebinar. You'll see a little tool on the right side of your screen. You can either chat or submit a question during the course of the webinar, and then at the end I will go through all of those questions and uh, give you answers to all of them. And if we run out of time, I will provide those answers via email. I'll also tell you all that I will be making a recording of this webinar available later so that you can review it or share it with any of your colleagues. Also, before I end the webinar, I'm going to go through a number of examples. I think examples of transactions, businesses that we directly helped can be very valuable. Really help, can really help to illustrate when a business is a good candidate for what we do. Okay, let's, let's dig into the webinar here. What is factoring? Well, in its most simple terms, factoring is a sale of a company's receivable in order to obtain working capital. There's lots of types of factoring out there, as I referred to earlier. Our brand is full notification, non-recourse. And what that means is the account debtors, which is a term we use for your client's customers are notified person directly. We also take on the credit risk of non-payment from those customers. So basically by factoring their receivables, the clients are getting a form of credit insurance in that we take on credit risk from their customers. What we don't take on is performance risk. I'll talk about that a little more later, but what that means is if a client sells us a receivable for product delivered or work performed, and it turns out that product was never delivered or the work was not performed to specifications, that's something the client is still responsible for. But Versant takes on any risk that their customers are unable to pay. First, let's go through some of the terminology around factoring. My brand is the world of loans. I have a, had a long career in SBA lending before I got into factoring. So that's the terminology that I'm most familiar with, and I think a lot of people on this call are also most familiar with. So I'd like to sort of do a translation here of the world of loans versus the world of factoring. So starting off, we don't refer to a loan. We refer to a factoring facility. There's no loan amount. We refer to factoring volume. No lender, factor, or purchaser of receivables. In this example, person funding is a factor. No borrower, there's a client or the seller of receivables. In lieu of a loan or note, we have a purchase and sale agreement, because that's what's happening here. Versant, or the factor, is buying receivables from our clients. There's no interest rate, there's a discount rate or a fee, and that's usually calculated as a percentage of the invoice amount, and it accrues over the length of time that the invoice is outstanding. And I'm going to go into more detail on that shortly. And lastly, instead of there being an, a borrower or an obligor, 
we have account debtors, which are the customer's clients. So I think it's helpful, particularly if you're talking to clients about whether or not factoring could be a fit for them, to, to sort of talk the talk and know the lingo of factoring. I want to next give you an idea of a prospective client profile. For Versa, we're looking at small, at small to medium-sized companies. Typically, our clients have anywhere from a million to a hundred million. We even have a couple that have significantly more than that in annual revenue. There are lots of factors out there that would do the smaller deals, and if any of you on this call would like to find one, I'd be happy, happy to point you to one. But where Versa starts is a business with a million dollars in revenue. And that business has a need for liquidity and can't wait 30, 60, 90 days for payment of their receivables. What we're seeing, particularly over the last couple of years, our clients having to wait longer and longer to get paid. And unfortunately, the better our clients' customers, the longer they end up waiting. The big guys are, are squeezing the little guys, and the big customers are making their suppliers wait and basically giving them free financing. So our clients typically can't afford to wait all that time to get paid. And that gap, that shortfall in working capital, would ordinarily be fulfilled or filled by a traditional bank line of credit. But our clients don't qualify for that for any number of reasons. It could be the business is too new, it's growing too rapidly, maybe it's seasonal and has big ups and downs in their revenue, maybe that they've had experienced recent losses, or for whatever reason, they're unbankable. Uh, and again, if you're on this call, you're probably familiar with bank lending being tight right now. Uh, banks really want their clients to be sort of in the center of their credit target, which leaves lots and lots of just don't meet those standards. Our goal at First and Funding and most factors is to provide a bridge to get the client over whatever ails them to a point which they can qualify for more traditional funding sources. Our clients' customers are usually large corporations, municipalities, or government agencies. That's what's most important to Versant and any non-recourse factor. I'm not underwriting the business. I'm underwriting their customers. So if they're selling to big companies or agencies, there's a good chance that we can help. Now, rather than tell you specifically what industries we can work with, it's much easier to tell you which ones we don't, because there's only a couple. The areas are medical, and by medical, I mean receivables due from insurance companies, Medicare, Medicaid, or somebody uh, who's in the construction field, a contractor. In both cases, there are specialists in the fact world that do nothing but those industries, and I'd be happy to, again, refer anybody in this call to X, but at first, we do just about anything else. Again, what's more important to us than what the client sells is who they sell it to, the quality of their results. How can Versant help? Well, most important and most uh, valuable of Versant is our ability to quickly get cash to our clients. It's not uncommon for us to be introduced to a client on one day and be wiring them money three to five days later. It really can happen that quickly. We also have the ability to fund larger transactions than most factoring companies out there. Once you get to a scenario where you're funding more than $10 million to a business, that really separates you from the pack. There's a lot of factoring companies out there that will go up to a million, a few that will go up to two, a couple that will go up to five, maybe even one or two that goes to ten. But once you exceed that point, there's, there really is no one that does deals of our size. And that really will where we can come in handy. Another unique aspect of our offering is our ability to offer the non recourse what that means is not only do we take on the credit risk of our clients, we don't require a personal guarantee. Uh, we, we take on that credit risk and we don't require anybody at the company to sign off on the credit quality of their customers. As I alluded to earlier, they, they do have to stand behind the quality of their work. So if we buy a receivable and the customer tells us, can order this, or you know, this is not the work, the work was not performed as they specified, that's something the, the client is still responsible for. But the credit worthiness of their customers, only we assess early on and we take on. Our clients can use the proceeds we provide them for really anything they choose. As I mentioned earlier, I come from the world of SBA lending and there we had to be very, very careful about how the company spent the money. It had to be used for very specific purposes and there was no deviation really permitted. We're not concerned about how our clients use the money. It's up to them. We've seen them use it for things like funding a short-term project, to help fuel their growth, in some cases just to be able to buy a big chunk of inventory at a discount, maybe preparing for the high season, we see that a lot particularly in the garment industry, or they're maybe they're maneuvering through a crisis and they see a little cash on hand to get through it. We do offer debtor in possession financing, 
So businesses currently in bankruptcy that need a little cash to get them through that bankruptcy, we can often accommodate. In limited cases, we've seen our clients use factoring to help fund an acquisition of a business. Usually not the entire purchase, but our being able to leverage against the receivables on the books can help sort of meet the full financing package. But most commonly, we are bridging some short-term working capital need of the business, and our client uses our facility in almost the exact same way they would a, work, a working capital line of credit for the bank. They draw down more, or they factor more when they need more, less when they need less. So I should also mention that is a somewhat unique aspect of Versant's offering as well, and that many factoring companies will require that the business factor 100% of their receivables with the factoring company. We do not. We allow our clients to choose. They need to choose from their creditworthy customers. If we've got a client that has strong customers and very weak ones, and all they want to factor is the weak, well, that's not for us. Um, but of their creditworthy customers, we'll factor as much as they, they choose, but it's up to the client to determine how much they want to factor at any point in time. Let me just give you an idea so that the process, and it's pretty straightforward. The way the process starts is with our client presenting an invoice to us. We verify the invoice, and we do that by contacting their customer and confirming the terms. So if we get an invoice for $10,000 of worth of widgets shipped to company ABC, we're going to contact ABC, confirm the quantity of widgets delivered, confirm that they met their specifications, and their intention to pay. And at that point, the clock starts ticking uh, on their, their factoring. We advance 75% of the invoice amount up front. That, that process usually all happens the same day. Usually, we get an invoice in the morning. We can be wiring money by the afternoon. Then as we receive payment, because now their, payments, their customers are going to make payment directly to Versant, as we receive payment, we then forward the client the remaining 25% less the factoring fee. And the factoring fee accrues to the at a rate of 2.5% of the invoice amount for every 30 days the invoice is outstanding. I'm going to get a little specific here to give you an idea as to how it works, but the way the fee calculates is 2.5% for the first 30 days, and then the fee is broken down into 10-day increments. And those increments are really just the factoring fee divided by 3 for each additional 10 days. So to be more specific, 2.5% for the first 30, 0.84% for each additional 10. So if our client on average has their customers paying in about 40 days, which is what we've been seeing, they're taking about a 3 to 4% discount on their invoices in exchange for getting cash up front, getting working capital in their hands that they can use to run their business. Now, we give our clients access to a lot of information, so they can always keep track of how, much, how many receivables they have outstanding, how long they've been outstanding what the fees are accruing on their invoices, so that, that there will be a web-based program they can use to gather that information. And our experience has been our clients end up with a lot more information by factoring with us than they had before. I should also mention our experience has been our clients' receivables pay more quickly when they're factoring with us than they did previously. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is we have nothing to worry about except receivables. Our clients, they've got to run a business, and that time, and a lot of very often, our clients don't have a dead person who does nothing but receivables. So things drag on. The follow-up isn't uh, always what it, what it should be. Sometimes their customers take advantage of discounts they were not entitled to. We stay on top of the receivables. That's not to say we're collectioning and we're hounding their customers for payment. Far from it. But we're keeping track. We're providing our clients data, information on how the receivables are performing. And also, uh, particularly when you get to larger companies that our clients sell to, they're worried about their credit rating, and they know that Versant and all factors report to credit reporting agencies. And so they often will up their game, pay a little quicker when a factoring company is in the middle. Once the factoring facility in play, is in very frequently, so as often daily, we've got some clients issuing invoices to us every day, others might be weekly, or others might be less frequently. But the point is there's usually a constant flow of cash from us to the client. We're giving them new cash, 75% advance rates as they give us new invoices. As their customers pay, we're giving them the rebates. That's the balance of the invoice amount, less a fee. Um, so it's very common that our clients are getting wires from us you know, frequently during the course of a week. Unlike a loan, our customers don't make payment to us. Uh, we're giving them cash and their customers are paying us. On some occasions, I mentioned we give our clients a lot of data. They can see where their invoices stand. As an invoice starts to approach longer and longer uh, outstanding, longer and longer time outstanding, 
our client may choose to buy back an invoice. For example, maybe there's some dispute they're working through with a customer, and they know it's going to take a while for that customer to pay. Well, rather than have the factoring fee continue to accrue, they might buy back that invoice, which often means a swap. Uh, so give us a new invoice to replace the one we have so that they can reduce fees that they would pay. And that's just something we do to accommodate our clients to help them control their costs. But like I said, since we're non-recourse, we would never force our client to buy back an invoice because of customer. I want to give you a little bit of an idea as to who else is out there in the factoring world. And there are a lot of little factors out there. Uh, and that, we call that category one, hundreds upon hundreds of small factoring companies. And their target are typically smaller businesses. So, you know, 10 to maybe up to $75,000 per month in factoring volume. These companies are usually very tight when it comes to capital. They often have a bank lending facility that puts a lot of restrictions on what they can do. A lot of restrictions about deal size, about customer concentration. Uh, so those factors can be great for a very small company. But once you get over a million dollars in annual revenue, you've typically outgrown that category one. Then there's category two, which is sort of the, the big guy. The CAT, largest factoring company in the world. Uh, Rosenthal, large factor focused on the, uh, the garment industry particularly, but lots of other areas as well. Most of these companies are targeting businesses that are just a small notch below bankable. So usually pretty strong companies, but just a little shy of a bank's credit parameters. I can tell you these category one and category two factors have been great referral sources for Versant because our niche are deals that don't qualify for those, those types of, of factors. So they're too large. They're too complicated. They're in an out of favor industry. There's too high customer concentration or they need speed. Uh, you know, there's a lot of big factory companies out there that are, are good at what they do, but they can't move with the speed that person can move. We're a small company, but we're well capitalized. And as I mentioned, we can go from, hi, I'm Chris, to funding a week later. And that's something the big guys can't do. There's just too much, too many layers there, too many approvals to go through to get from point A to point B, levels that we just don't have at first. So that is our niche. It's quite honestly deals that can't get done by other factors. First, let me touch on some, some questions that I expect you might, might have before I give you the opportunity to, to voice some of your own. What are Versant's basic requirements for factor? Well, most importantly, that our, our clients sell something, whether it be a product or service, to good quality companies. It's important that they, their customers be strong. So whatever they sell, they sell it to good quality customers. Does Versant offer factoring in all U.S. states? The answer is yes. We've got clients from coast to coast and we're happy to do so. Uh, we do most of our business with phone, fax, and email. We don't require audits. We don't require inspections of business. So we're allowed, we can move very quickly even with a business that we will never see in person. Does Versant require certified financial statements? We do not. I'm not, I'm not going to require any financial statements from our clients. I just want to learn about their businesses. I mean their customers. And I can learn most of what I need from their customers by searching. It's rare that I need my client to ever ask their customer for information. I can usually learn what I need to through publicly available information. Does a company have to be profitable to qualify for factory? And the answer is no. We've got a lot of customers in our portfolio that they are losing money and they will for the foreseeable future. Um, but with the help of some additional working capital, we might be able to help them bridge the gap and get to a point where they are bankable once again. Uh, but it's, uh, it's not uncommon that our clients are currently losing money. How long does the closing process take? A couple of times that we can move quickly. So the most common hurdle or cause of a delay is a surprise. And I bet a lot of people on this call can relate to that. A surprise, by sur a surprise I mean a client doesn't tell us the full truth or leave some things out. And the most common issue is they don't tell us about an outstanding lien. While we're not looking for a lot of collateral, we're looking for a lien on the receivables. We do need to have a first lien on the company's accounts receipt. If the business has a bank line of credit, it's likely that that bank has a first lien on the receivables. If they have an SBA loan, it's likely that they have a first lien on the receivables. Now, that lien being in place doesn't kill the deal necessarily, but it it's going to require collaboration and cooperation from a bank. And again, as people on this call can probably relate to, that's, that's not a sure thing. Sometimes we can get what we need and we can get the client of the funding they, they, they're looking for, but 
sometimes not, uh, particularly if the client has had a rough relationship with the bank. The bank might not be very open to giving up any collateral. But well, sometimes we can really be a help in that process. We can be sort of a, a, an intermediary to a degree between our client and their bank. For example, we've had a number of clients where they're past due with their bank. Uh, they may be in, in the workout department. And what we'll do is we'll enter into an intercredit agreement with the bank, whereby the bank agrees to give up some collateral, the first lien on the receivables. In some cases, their lien on a portion of the receivables is all they'll give up. In return, we will make loan payments on behalf of the client. So what the bank gets is insurance of getting payment because, for example, in one deal, our agreement was that the first $5,000 worth of proceeds we fund to the client each month will go to the bank to make their loan payment. So basically, the bank was assuring them that they would get the first 5000 or the first revenue this client generates every month to make their payment. So we can help in getting over those humps, but the point is, if the client doesn't tell us about that, we might think we're about to fund and then we find the lien and things get knocked off track. What industries will version purchase accounts receivable from? And we are very broad. We're quite the generalist when it comes to industries. We've got manufacturers, we've got staffing, we've got uh, consulting, we've got software, we've got a wide variety. I alluded to earlier there's a couple of industries we don't care for, medical and construction. I can point you to experts in those areas if you need help, but we can do just about anything else. Is there a minimum volume of receivables that need to be committed to in order to qualify for factoring? In most cases, we're looking for businesses that can factor at least 100000 per month. We've done a few that are a little smaller because we expect the revenues of the business to grow and eventually reach the $100,000 mark, but it's not our specialty. We're not looking to do the smaller deals. We're looking for those at least a million in revenue. And we've got one right now that that's due. we're doing over $15 million a month to them right now. So we, we can do some sizable transactions. Does Versa require personal guarantees? And the answer is no. I alluded to this earlier. Performance guarantees are required. We need somebody at the company to stand behind the product or service they provide, but we do not require personal guarantees of the credit of their customers. Who qualifies for factoring? Well, we've got a wide variety of industries. What's most important is that they've got good customers and they don't qualify for a bank. And in many cases, they don't qualify for what other factoring companies are offering as well. Can a company with little or no credit history qualify for factoring? And the answer is yes. We have a client for whom we factored the first invoice that they ever issued. It was a startup company. I can also tell you that the owners of the company had very poor credit, personal credit. They had a history of a couple of failed enterprises in their past, so this was not a bankable deal by any stretch. But the product they were selling was sought after by a number of good quality companies. And so we were able to factor those receivables, get the company going, sort of get wheels in motion so that they can begin to fund themselves. But we were able to sort of get things underway uh, with no credit history of any kind. Does a com company's customers always know when a company is seeking financing through factoring? And the answer to this is yes. We are not underwriting our clients. We're not taking any uh, personal guarantees. What we have to us, what we have to protect us, is that flow of cash from the receivables. So it is important that payments come directly from the customers to Versant, and as a result, their customers need to be aware of this. Now, we've positioned it very positively. The way they're going to find out is they're going to receive a letter on their supplier's letterhead that indicates that they've entered into a financing arrangement to help fuel their growth. As a result, their payments need to be sent to the following address, and the address is, is Versant's. Now, in a, environment where financing is just simply going out of business, our clients get to tell their customers, I've got financing to stay in business to keep serving you. So while our customers are, are often worried, what is this going to mean? What are my, my, what are my customers going to think about this? It's just never the red flag they expect it to be. Factoring is much more common than many people understand, particularly with the caliber of our client's typical customer. When we've got companies that are selling to Walmart and Target and Home Depot and the government, they are paying thousands upon thousands of factors today. It's such a non-issue for them. They flip a switch in their accounts payable system, and now the payments come to Versa versus the supplier. So it's just not the issue that, that they expect it to be. Which brings me to the next question here. Will seeking factoring be viewed negatively? And it's just simply not. There was a time when factoring was really only for businesses that were on their last legs, but that's just not today. Uh, as, as probably everyone on this phone has, has recognized, 
businesses that were readily bankable you know, three, four years ago, today just are not. A business that might have violated a covenant and the bank would you know, waive it and re re review it in, in a quarter, now it's cause for immediate acceleration of the loan, immediate default of the loan. So the fact that our clients get to tell their customers that they've got financing, it's just not the issue that they expect it to be. Next, I'd like to give you a little example of how factoring might impact the profits of a business. I can tell you all the time our clients object to our costs. They say 2.5% a month, that's crazy. You know, a bank will charge me prime plus one. Like, well, no, they won't. If they were, you wouldn't be talking to me. So a bank used to charge a prime plus one, but banks aren't, aren't interested in funding you right now. Our clients need to look at their options. And our clients' most common options are do nothing, take on no new business, stumble and fail, maybe take on a partner, in which case now you're giving away a portion of equity, a percentage of eventual profits, and probably some decision-making capabilities as well. So those are your options. So if you compare us to those options, we can look pretty strong, particularly based upon this example, which shows how we can really increase profits. So there's a cost of doing that, but it can net greater cash in the bank. So in this example, we show revenues going from 100 to 200 by factory. Granted, it's a, it's a drastic example, but I'm trying to illustrate how it can impact profits. Cost of goods sold as a percentage would remain constant, as with the gross profit as a percentage. Variable costs will remain fixed. Again, that's at the same um, percentage, and fixed costs remain, will remain fixed. The cost of factoring is now added to the after factoring scenario. But even after the additional cost of factoring, you can see because revenues were able to increase, we were able to bring more money to the bottom line. And that's what's important. If our clients can do more business after factoring than they did before, and the margins of the business are good. You can see in this case they were 35%. Our average client is about 30 to 35. Once we get to much below 20, we start to recommend a factory might not be for them because the cost might just be too high. But if the margins are good and our business and our financing allows them to do incremental business, you can see why paying 2.5% a month can make a lot of sense. Next, I'd like to cite some examples. I think this can really get the wheels turning about businesses you're talking to or that you may do in the future that could benefit from, from what we do. The first is a consumer electronics manufacturer. And I'll start off by telling you that consumer electronics can be a tough industry to finance. What has a lot of companies worried about consumer electronics is the risk of a defect. You know, you ship 10,000 units. They seemed fine when they tested them at the, the warehouse. But when they get into the hands of consumers, there was a defect. They start to fail and returns go up, dilution gets too high, and the factor starts losing money on their advances. This was a, a particularly long-lived company, been around a long time. Their niche is sort of a lower end of tablet PCs, e-readers, e and MP3 players. And they had some really good customers. Um, the big retailers, they were also sold into a number of uh, drug stores, a number of online retailers. And what got this company into trouble was a defective product shipment where the returns were huge. Now, what this company did right was they were, had a very open return policy because they wanted to sort of really protect their reputation. So they said, we'll take anything back, and they did, and wow, it just the returns came in big time. So as a result, they violated bank covenants. They had huge loss in that quarter, and the bank immediately began to accelerate repayment, cut them off for future advances, and really, really clamped down on them hard. Now, because this business was so large, they couldn't find a factory company willing to take it all on. So they actually tried to participate it among a few factors. But those factors just couldn't get it done quickly enough. Versa could, because uh, I mentioned we've got a streamlined process. Uh, and this is going to be a very sizable transaction. The business's products are in real high demand. You know, while uh, an iPad might cost you 800 bucks for a high-end model, they've got products for 150 250 So it's a sort of an entry point for people to start to have a tablet uh, before they can really afford the higher end products. So strong product offering, and hopefully we can help this, this company reestablish its reputation and qualify for bank financing uh, maybe 18, 24 months down the road. Next example is a commercial printer. They're still out there. Um, and this particular company's niche was printing statements, statements particularly for um, some of the big cell phone providers. Uh, and while there's lots of people out there getting their bills electronically like I do, uh, there's still plenty that want a statement in the mail, and they print millions of them. This company had just been, a, been acquired by our client. It's a long-running business, 
but our client bought it recently from the seller. Now, at the time of the purchase, financing just wasn't available for a business acquisition. There was some goodwill in the purchase price. Um, so they used seller financing. It seemed to make sense at the time, but the relationship between seller and buyer was very strained. Uh, the seller was getting their nose into relationships with the company's suppliers, with some of their customers, and putting a lot of pressure on the company to try to pay her down more quickly. And it was really driving the current owner nuts and impacting the business. So they did a sale leaseback of equipment to raise some capital to pay down the seller and factor some receivables to pay her down additionally. And we also are factoring on an ongoing basis to provide additional working capital. So this was a case where business was doing all right, uh, but just not strong enough to qualify for bank financing when the, our buyer acquired it. Uh, but the seller relationship too strained, had to get out from under that. And business is still a little rocky right now, but is starting to get its footing and we're hopeful we can help them uh, grow out from under their problems. Next is a security software provider. This particular company provides software for mobile devices, a way to keep the data on those devices secure. A lot of interest from the medical field. The idea is that so physician can be walking the halls of their practice or the hospital, have very confidential client information or patient information on the tablet, but it can be very secure from prying eyes. And what this company, how this company failed was they were so focused on a merger. They were talking to another company that had a complementary technology, and they thought if they could integrate these two technologies, they would be unstoppable. And all management was focused on this merger. As a result, their financials suffered, new product development suffered, some of their customer relationships suffered, revenues kept clicking down, and they their bank called a line of credit. And unfortunately, the merger never happened. The merger fell through. So here they were after 12 months of a lot of effort into a merger that never was consummated and out of a bank line of credit. But they had some real good customers. Factors didn't like this because of the industry. They didn't understand it. Uh, the, the high tech nature of it made people a little nervous. Um, so we were not. We felt comfortable with the product. We felt comfortable with their customers. And here's another case where we expect that 24 months from now they won't need us anymore and banks will be all over this deal. You hear, probably hear a lot about factoring being used in the garment industry. Here's a company that's not very glamorous. What they manufacture are t-shirts, sort of very simple, basic, blank, multi different color t-shirts. And they sell them to um, second tier manufacturers who customize them and then sell them in turn to the big retailers. Well, this company really suffered during the volume was way, way down. And this company thought they were about a really big new customer. And they got a little anxious, and they jumped the gun and overproduced. So they had all this inventory planning to sell it to this new customer. Actually, the number was, I think the number was 1.2 million T-shirts they had manufactured, and that were now sitting in a warehouse, no buyer. So as a result, they were now out of covenant on their, their, uh, their bank loan. They were able to negotiate some principal reduction, but they still couldn't get a funding source to step in and provide them the financing they needed. Um, and they also had some high customer concentration, which spooked a number of factors. There's also an inventory lender involved in this deal, which is common for us. We'll partner with the inventory lender, enter into into credit agreement, get this company the financing they need uh, to get back on their feet. So I hope that those examples were helpful in getting a feel for what types of, of companies that we can help and uh, the businesses that will benefit from from factoring. And I, I asked you to, during the course of the presentation, if you have questions, to submit them on GoToWebinar. You see there should be a, a to both submit a question or to chat. Uh, either one will send the question directly to me. Um, so let's, let me dive into those questions. The first one is, in what niche does Versant excel? Uh, well, we're kind of a generalist in the industries that we can accommodate. But I can tell you the profile of the client where we do best is one that doesn't qualify for financing any place else, um, both in terms of other lenders or other factors. So high customer concentration, financing need over $2 million, industry that's out of favor with most other uh, finance companies are really where we excel. Or somebody who needs to move quickly. If somebody needs cash in the matter of a, of a week or, or several days, that's where Versant can excel, and just no one else can provide financing in the speed that we do. Uh, next question asks about the 
best sources of business, best sources of factoring referrals. I can tell you most of my referrals come to me from lenders of some sort. Uh, bankers are a great source of business because the first place somebody goes where they need money, they need a loan, is they go to a bank. If a bank can't help, that's when they start to look for options. But if you can build some good relationships with bankers, uh, they can be a great source of business for you, particularly since you can often help protect them. They might have a loan outstanding to the customer today and they want to get repaid and the business just isn't going to survive long enough to do that. We can keep the business going, keep payments flowing. I have referenced earlier that we can enter into an intercreditor agreement or a tri-party agreement so that we're making loan payments on behalf of the client to help give the banks some greater assurance of payments. So banks would be a great source. I've also found other factoring companies to be, to be valuable because uh, we're, we just fill a niche that most other factoring companies don't. Next question asks, asks how will Versa interact with client customers? Uh, we also call those the account debtors. Those are the companies our clients sell to. And it's a common concern, our clients voice, what are you going to say to my customers? What are, you, what are you going to do? Well, I can tell you first, we're not a collection agency. We don't hound our clients' customers for payment. We pay close attention. And if a receivable goes beyond term, and by that I mean if a business usually pays in 40 days and it's now day 45, usually our first call is to our client to find out what's happening. Maybe there's a dispute the client is working through. Um, and maybe they want to buy the receivable back, as I referred to earlier, do a swap and take over it and collect it themselves. Or maybe the client might tell us, you know what, I'm never selling to that customer again. They don't, they don't, they are liars. For some reason, they just don't want to work with them anymore. They might tell us, go ahead, use the full force and power to your capabilities to get paid as soon as you can, in which case we'll do that. Or they might tell us, you know what, hold tight, payment's coming soon. But the point is we're going to collaborate with our clients to figure out the best way to handle payment. We are contacting the client, client's customers every time we get a new invoice to verify. But I can also tell you if the client is selling to really big companies, they might have an automated way of doing that. There might be a website we can access. Uh, sometimes a simple email to somebody in accounts payable. So even that verification process can be very soft uh, and very simple uh, with very little burden on their, their customers. But it's in our best interests to protect our clients' customer relationships. And as we, the way we make money is the more our clients sell to their customers, the more money we make. So it's in our best interest to make sure that relationship stays strong. Let me see. Oh, here's, uh, here's another great question. I should have touched on this in the presentation. What information is required to qualify a business for factoring? You know, again, I came from the SBA world, and for us, we measured f file or application sizes in heat. It wasn't uncommon for a, a loan package to be 12, 24 inches of paper. It couldn't be further from the truth with factoring. We require a few sheets of paper. I need a recent account receivable aging. And if I don't recognize all the names of the customers, I need some addresses. And I'm going to use that information to research the creditworthiness. We're usually searching publicly available information, databases of information, factoring companies, uh, to figure out the creditworthiness of those customers. With that, I can usually quick tell you within 24 hours how we feel about the deal. Uh, if we like it, our next step would be I'll ask you to arrange a call with the client, or depending how you want to handle it, we'll run with it and arrange a call with the client and the owner of Versant to figure out if you've got a match. And we learn more about them, they can learn more about us, and if it looks like we've got a match, we'll then issue them a, a formal proposal. And that process is usually 24 hours from the first time we receive information. If the client accepts the proposal, we can be ready to fund a week later. Um, so with a few sheets of paper, we can usually learn enough about the deal to figure out if it's a match for, for Verson. Okay, um, next question is, will Verson factor international AR? I can tell you that is not our specialty. We have made some exceptions uh, and have on occasion been able to factor international receivables, um, but it's not our focus. I can tell you that... Um, there are some countries out there that are more friendly to factors than others. If your receivables or your client's receivables are due from a company based in a country that has friendly factoring laws, there's a good chance we can help if it's a sizable opportunity. We're not going to learn the laws of a new country to, to fund a few thousand dollars, but if it's sizable, and by that I usually mean a million or more, 
per month opportunity, we can and have been able to factor receivables due from foreign countries. Uh, another question, does Versant get credit applications on debtors? Usually not. Now, that's a good question. And do we set credit limits on debtors? Those are two good questions. We don't usually need to get a credit application. Usually we can learn all we need through publicly available information. If we can't, and our client believes our customer is strong, we could ask them to get a credit application. Now, I can tell you our experience has been, if there's not much information available publicly, it's usually a pretty small company and not a good candidate for factoring. But it, we would only require that application if we can't learn what we need to publicly. And the second part of the question, do you set credit limits on debtors? Uh, and put debtors on holds or past due and over limit? Well, it, it depends. It depends on who the customer is. There are lots of, of companies that will factor as much in receivables as they can generate. For example, uh, we'll factor as much Walmart as you could possibly do, or companies of that caliber, Target, the, the Home Depot, some of the really big retailers, the U.S. government, um, many, most state municipalities, um, most state governments and municipal, municipal governments will put no limits on. There are other cases where the credit isn't quite strong enough and we will set limits. Now we don't automatically put somebody on hold for past due. We just need to understand what's going on. For example, we had a client recently had a receivable go to nearly a hundred days, but we were watching very carefully. We were very in close contact with our customer. At no point did we get aggressive and start demanding payment um, because we knew our client was working through uh, an issue with them. So we're happy to buy the next receivable from, due from that customer because of, of how things went. So it depends on the reason that the transaction or the invoice went long, went past due, um, but not, it's not automatic. And there's lots and lots of customers that will factor as much in receivables as they could possibly generate, which is another great feature of factoring in that unlike a bank line, we don't set a cap and say, okay, we will fund you X amount and no more. If our clients' customers are strong, we can grow right along with them. And we might be funding them a million dollars a month today, and then a year from now, two million or three million or more because their business is growing and the customers are strong. So I don't see any further questions, so I, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so much uh, making available to you a recording of this presentation so that you can share it with any of your colleagues who might have an interest or review it again if you have any questions. And you can see my contact information is up on the screen now. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if I can be of any help in the future. And I'm not expecting everyone to be an expert right now on factoring, so I'm happy to, to hear your thoughts or ideas on a client that you think might fit. So again, I'm Chris Landis from Versant Funding. Thank you so much, and I look forward to the opportunity to work with you. Take care.